Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 38 of the Dragon Raider podcast. We are your hosts, Hero and Joe. And how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well. A little bit of a cough, but otherwise fine. Yourself? I'm doing all right. Bit of a sore throat, I guess, at the minute. But I'll power through. I'm a trooper. I'm doing it for the people. So <laughs> <laughs> let's get started with Roshi's rant. Let's go. This is Roshi's rant. This is Roshi's Rant, the first segment of the podcast where we deep dive into a particular topic on Dragon Ball. And today we're talking about the return of Dragon Ball Super, because that's coming up soon. Apparently, we don't know when, but at some point. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about whether or not the show needs some more transformations. Because everyone loves a good transformation. (laughs) (laughs) It's Uh, it's the inevitable step, more than likely. Yeah. So I guess... How, how do you want to split this? We can talk about main characters first and if they need a new transformation or not, and then yeah. go from there. I think the most obvious one we have to look at first is the one that already technically exists mm. and that someone already technically has, which is Vegeta yeah. and Ultra Ego. Yeah. So that already technically exists. He already has it mm-hmm. in the manga. So I think they probably have to look at that and say, are we going to follow that man and are we going to give it to him? Because mm. technically he's already just been in the anime. He's literally just been given an, a transformation yeah. with his super duper blue. <laughs> so True. how long did they delay? Did they just not care? Did they just look at it as what they did with uh, red and just immediately ignore it and give him alter ego straight away and just uh, go straight into alter ego? Like, do they care? Like, can they just bypass it? I mean, is it really that big a deal? Ooh, I think uh, the manga readers would be uh, pretty upset by you saying is it a big deal. No, 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 no. I don't mean Ultra Ego. Oh, the I super, mean, super duper assembly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Like, just bypassing that because it's not really that impactful, really, is it? It's, it's not strong. visually different in any way from Blue. No. So, so stepping, stepping straight up to Ultra Ego. Mm. would just put more on par with um, Goku when he's in his alternating state. It would make them more balanced, especially after what we saw in the um, superhero film, mm. after them sparring out of any transformations. Yeah, Because he's, he's going to need to get it. People will expect it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, 100%. So. I'm going to go out on a wild limb here and say, yes, they'll definitely give him it. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. They're not going to mess around. I think you'll probably get it. <sighs> Maybe not in the first it's... arc, but pretty soon into the show, I think. Yeah. I, I think they're not going to leave him with his his blue form for very long. I, I don't no. think they have any attachment to it. The fans don't particularly, I don't think. I can see this as a main point for the second arc. And the reason I'm saying second arc in particular is because first arc, they're already going to have all the marketing of just the show return and people are going to tune in. It's inevitable. They don't need much uh, hype around it. Second arc, to get people to return again, you know, push that new form. You know, they're going to, and then that's going to bring in the fans. Oh, Vegeta's getting a new form, finally. Like, what is it this time? Blah, blah, blah. And then all the toys that they can make with it as well, straight away, of course. Not going to mess around. Every time someone dyes their hair, then they get a new toy, so... (laughs) Yeah, it's going to happen. 100%. I can see that happening. I think uh, Ultra Ego is inevitable. It will come at some point, whether they do the manga arcs or not. I feel like they're going to change it around. But yeah, yeah, I think that form will come. Yeah, I, I think they're locked into that. I don't really think they have a choice regardless. Mm. So I think I wouldn't even class that as a transformation i think that's mm. already just expected um yeah. so really it's who else gets one yeah so i mean we've seen it but you know go on and pick low they'll get their forms officially probably when the show becomes can- well the anime becomes canon again um 
So, but I mean, know. do you do you even class them as not having it at the minute? Mm. I mean, mm, uh, I don't know. Until see, this is the strange thing about Dragon Ball. It's like you can't take the films as canon until they're in the anime. <laughs> So yeah. it's like, uh, I mean, they do have this. But there'd be form. so many people that would disagree with you and say that they are locked in now because a lot of people would disagree with you and say, no, they are kind of now. Mm. It, this would be a, a big, this would be a huge debate and say, no, no, they are. They're locked in now. I think they, they are locked in, let's face it. They are. Yeah. Because, I mean, Broly isn't technically in the anime yet. So yeah. you know, I mean, and, I mean are you gonna are you gonna tell a lot of anime fans now that Broly's not canon? Like, <laughs> good, yeah. good luck with that. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I to mean, say, to say to say to try and say Broly's not canon to anime viewers now, you would cause a riot. Like, yeah, <laughs> I would say I would say the fandom is quite set on the fact that Broly is canon now. I think the way the films were as well, they've really lined themselves up for being canon and to take place straight away after the show ended because they continue straight from where the show ended and they reference the end of the show, especially the Tournament of Power and stuff in Broly and in Superhero. So it's like, yeah, they're going to just continue. Yeah. It's going to happen that way, which mean, which is why, I mean, we've mentioned plenty of times, but it's why the manga is kind of in doubt because, you know, the manga takes place well i mean it's just different you know yeah. those those two films the brilliant superhero yeah. films don't yeah. happen in the manga so you know something has to change i, I think i think this is the thing it's like it's a it's a, this massive crossroads like for, and for in terms of for anime fans broly is is outright mm. um he is canon outright and i yeah. think that's why to the anime fans Gohan Beast and Orange Piccolo are right just as canon. Mm. I don't see why they wouldn't think those transformations are any less canon than Broly being canon. Yeah. Wouldn't really make any sense for them not to be. Mm. Why would one film's um, content be canon and not the other? Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, to be honest, yeah, they're already locked in. So, yeah. for them, stepping into Super 2, I would already consider them there. Hmm. So for the sake of going into Super 2, I don't even consider them being transformations. I consider them already existing. Yeah. Um, so apart from them three, the only other one that has appeared in some media uh, is Black Freezer, I guess, which yeah. is something I personally would love to see just because I'm a massive Freezer fan. I love Freezer. As a villain, and I want him to do this final hurrah, which it seems like is beginning in the manga. Um, with this whole new Black Freezer arc, I think it will be his final final bout or whatever, his final show in Dragon Ball. It has to be at this point. Um, but it's a strange one because they might not follow the manga route at all, just because of these two films. You know, they might just decide, okay. Or, or maybe they do. Maybe they like the characters from the manga, but they think, you know what? We're just going to rewrite the story so then it fits the timeline properly. And yeah, maybe we do things different. It's not going to follow the manga completely. Maybe the characters are going to be involved, but the things that they do and the things that happen aren't the same, just so that it works better. Weirdly meld it. Yeah. I think that's probably what they'll end up doing. I, yeah. think, I think they'll have they'll probably end up doing that. Mm. Uh, I think it'll probably get upset a mm. lot of people, but to be honest, it's either that or you say it doesn't exist full stop. Mm. I think if you do get Black Freezer, you're not getting him for 120 episodes. Yeah. Um, yeah that's, not... that's exactly the thing, though, because if we're... Uh, it's hard to predict how many episodes this new show is going to be, so I'm, I'm kind of just looking at it as maybe the same length as Super. You yeah. know, just like three main arcs, you know? Well, mm, I got... Yeah, no. There was four arcs, I guess, in original Super. Beerus, if that counts as a full arc, I guess it does. Frieza, Black Goku, Goku Black, and Tournament Power, so far. You know, those are the four main arcs. So if you do four arcs again in the return, there's got to be the Galactic Patrol arc to begin. Yeah. Then there's Granola. Then 
I always get confused on which one's which. Is it Gus first? Or what's the other guy called again? The other main bad guy. So there's the Galactic Patrol. There's same thing again. There's Granola. Yeah. So there's Black Patrol, Granola. No, there's Morrow. It's not Morrow. That's the Morrow. name I was forgetting. Yeah. So Morrow, then Granola, then Gas. So four again. Yeah. And then they've only just introduced Freezer. But the Gas arc is the longest arc they've ever had in Dragon Ball. Uh, yeah. Manga chapters wise, at least. Anyway, it's the longest running arc that they've ever had. Which is quite surprising, really. So, you know, Gas is a big villain, like a massive villain. So it's like, that seems like a show ender, if anything, if they're going to do that, because they already, they've got to go through four arcs to get to him. And if this last arc is massive, then it's like, are they really going to go with Black Freezer? Are they just going to leave it and think, you know what, we're just going to end it? I mean, and it's maybe, maybe the Black Freezer thing will have to end quickly. Because he's so powerful. Uh, nah, for, for Freezer's final hurrah, nah, they've got to make it epic. Maybe. But I think basically you're not getting him until yes. way down the line. Yeah. Way, then, way, way down the line. Yeah. And again, they could even what? just end the show after gas on like a cliffhanger. You know, because in the manga, spoilers alert, incoming. You know, but Freezer appears out of nowhere and kills him so it's like maybe they just end the show there and leave it massive cliffhanger and say maybe we'll return but you might need to wait another 10 years and then that's, that's it and then everyone would hate everything yeah or they just change the end and so then Goku and Vegeta just get the kill like everyone was kind of expecting and then they just don't bring back Frieza again and that's it but just because of the end of the tournament of power and then the Broly film, it's like, <coughs> you've got to bring Freezer back at some point. You need to. You have mentioned him oh. too many times. They so would, you can't... No, they would definitely end it with Freezer. Yeah, so you can't just, like, you know, not bring him back again. They've, they've screwed him over too many times to not bring him back. Exactly. So It, end, it ends with Freezer, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of like poetic yeah. justice, I guess. You know, the biggest villain in Dragon Ball is Freezer. He has the best arc in Z, potentially, uh, up for debate. He's the most well-known villain in anime, I guess. And yeah, ending the show once and for all with Freezer again. And that's fine. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, I think a lot of people, they would finally get the satisfaction three ending to Dragon Ball that they missed out on mm. with Boo. Yeah. Um, and I think that would be exactly what Super would need. And yeah. I think that's a big thing because, again, people were very salty about Z and with Super, Super could end comfortably. Mm. And I think that's what it really needs. Mm. And I think Freezer is the answer to that. Mm. If Freezer is done correctly. Yeah. And I think like someone like Gas, like, is he interesting enough to carry that? If mm. he goes on for too long and people get sick of him um, mm. and stuff like that. Cause that because with the longer arc, I did again I didn't read the manga or anything like that, but I did hear that the length of the arcs in the manga, people did get a little sick of it. That it was getting a little bit too long. Yeah, I've seen the I tweets. Know, of I don't know saying, if that was like, just some, some particular haters or what, mm. because again, I don't read it. Um, I don't know if that was just some particular my bad mouthers or what. I think I know, the but... thing that's making people feel like that is the fact that they only release a chapter every like month or so. Yeah. So it's like it's been six, seven, eight months, and people are like. Oh, this is still going on, but in reality, it's like, uh, yeah, maybe a few pages here and there. And then yeah. they're waiting again for another month. So it's like, maybe it doesn't feel so long if you just read it all back to back, or, you know, if when they animate it and they get around to doing it, then maybe it won't take so long. But yeah. I suppose, imagine if you have the, like, the freezer fight against mm. Goku on Namek, and that's a long fight. Now, imagine you've had that fight going on. 
for five times longer than it actually did, mm. being as long as it did, and you were only getting a page per however, <laughs> yeah. eventually you're going to want something other than that fight, aren't you? Yeah. So uh, if it is the case of that's how people were beginning to feel, fair enough. You're gonna want. You're gonna want. You're gonna want a mix up. You're gonna want something new. Mm. So again, I'm. I. I can't really fully comment because it's not something I've read. But it would be understanding if that's the case that mm. sometimes you do need a change and you need to freshen things up. Yeah. Um, it will be something we need to look into. Um, and um, but I think that when Black Freezer does, I think he will end up making an appearance in Super. Mm in super two and i think he should be the poetic ending um i i think he's the sort of transformation that's perfectly acceptable um yeah, yeah i don't think he's um an unnecessary asshole so to speak mm-hmm. transformation because we already know he exists yeah and he's like that. yeah he's not dead so let's say what's he been doing and of course he would come back in the form he got golden form after how long was it three months Let's yeah. say, yeah, of course. Send him away, make him stronger, bring him back with a new form. It just makes sense. Even if it wasn't Black Freezer, they can do anything. Blue Freezer, Green Freezer, who cares? But just yeah. a new form. Tall Freezer. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Just but, make him like, uh, make more like Kula. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or bring him back with Kula. You know, we've talked about that yeah. before as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, what about people who haven't had a form revealed in the manga or films is there anyone you see maybe getting a new form well we need to we need to think about what's going to happen to broly mm. i think he's the he's the one we need to think about next he's the obvious one yeah because does he does he um does he classify as a transformation does his does his control mm. classify as a tra- transformation <sighs> of course it does let's face it everything yeah. that is slightly different about a dragon ball character equals a new form yeah so, yeah it will be. I, I want to know if they're just going to control his fury or if he's going to get God. Hmm. I don't know if I want him to get God. It's interesting. I never really thought about him getting God, but it makes sense since he's training with Beerus and Whis now. So because why, him, why him, wouldn't he? Because it would take away from his, his uniqueness, if that's the right word. I guess. Like him going green, him going big green. <laughs> yeah. Um, like when he gets angry, he turns green. He becomes the legendary Super Saiyan, and that's where yeah. yeah, and that's and that's where he gets that power from. It's an unlimited source of power. Mm. He destroyed Goku and Vegeta when he drew upon that power. Mm. And if he can control that power, he's stronger than God form. He doesn't need to be. Mm. So why does he need to go God? He doesn't. Yeah. So why does he need God form? There's no reason for him to. He, he doesn't, comes. but I could see it as a cop out. Yeah, I think it would be so much better if he could control it, and then he can like he can stay like maybe small, smaller Broly, or you can like maybe not like proper small. Like he still changes his features to become mm. like like a little bit bigger. Like he still gets the angry face and everything mm. like that. Like he doesn't stay like happy, smiley with Chila Broly, like he yeah. still gets that hulking form, mm. but just like not massive, scary, uncontrolled. Um, so you can see he's got like a form of control in him. Mm. Um, but you can still see his green power up and everything like that. Um, and you can see he's able to draw on the strength and everything. I think that'd be so much better for him. And yeah. we would expect that. And I think that's an expected path for Broly. I Mm. do not want him to get God. I'm not interested in that. I have two blue Super Saiyans and whatever. (laughs) You have two at home. You don't need a third. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Well, why do we need another God? We don't. Mm. Like, we've got two. We've got them on their path. Yeah. And they're advancing that into Ultra Ego or Ultra Instinct. That's his path. That would be his path. Like, there's nowhere for him to go that's interesting. Mm. So he's got a whole new path that's interesting for him to evolve. Yeah, so I'll be fine with that as well. And there's plenty of characters. I've got a few in mind that I can see returning to have like a new form as well. Like, um, for example, I think Kale, Khalifa, and Kaba will all get a new form. 
I think they're very highly likely to return when the show returns. But again, these aren't in the manga at all, which is like, this is why I don't think they're going to go down the manga route this hard. Because there's no way these guys aren't going to return. Hit, Champa, they're all going to return. They're all fan favorites now introduced. So they've got to bring them back in some ca- capacity, even if it is just a mini arc here and there. But they're going to return. They have to. They can't just ignore them. So Hit will, definitely. Hit and Kaba will, definitely. Yeah. And I can see the rest of them coming back as well. And I think Vegeta will teach Kaba how to go further beyond and unlock, you know, maybe, I don't even know which form. Which form would he teach Kaba? He, he wouldn't Red. teach him God. Red God, maybe. Would he, though? That seems like a high form to get. It's his next step. You can't teach him three, can mm. he? <laughs> you can't teach him three. The <laughs> 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 yeah. is a form. <laughs> I guess that is Vegeta's next form, isn't it? After two, he yeah. just goes to Vegeta's a, Vegeta's a punk. You can't teach him. A, he wouldn't teach him. He won't teach him Hulk and two because he doesn't like it. He hates that form. Mm. How many times has he told off Trunks for it? Yeah. No. Yeah. I guess. Oh, Red God Kaba. That would be interesting. But uh, that is literally the next step mm. for, Vegeta, for Vegeta. It's two straight to Red God. Yeah. But yeah. I, I can see him getting some sort of new form, whatever it is. I can see Kaba getting it, and I can all, Well, actually, I reckon it could be Blue. You know, because that's the one he flexes in front of Kaba and says, "Look, this is what you could become." So I'd say callback. Because that, that was his top tier. Well, yeah, like, but exactly. That's the thing. It's like, yeah, you can go Super Saiyan. I can do this. I'm blue now. <laughs> so I feel like maybe he could have like, teaching Kaba. I like how it's like, we became gods, but then we went beyond it and we became yeah. blue. So it's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, make no, it make God sense. God damn it's so much better, Vegeta. Stop. <laughs> yeah, but I, I could see uh, Kale and Khalifa learning like Super Saiyan 3. I think that would be a cool one for them, especially since I've already got long hair. How is that going to look? She, yeah, Kit, um, Khalifa was begging Goku to teach her three. Yeah. Um, so I can see that happening. Um, Kale hates Goku, though. Yeah, but just because she's strong, I think she'll get over it. I, I think she just will. <laughs> I think just... it'll be it'll be interesting episodes and stuff. I think it'll... I don't know. If the, it'll be it'll be interesting. They'll probably try and make a meme of the episode. <sighs> yeah, just because Goku is the character that everyone ends up liking in the end. It's mm. like he'll just end up convincing Kale that he's a nice guy, and then you know she'll fall from him and be like, "Oh yeah, okay, fine, I trust you." Blah blah. Let's it's basically it's basically the same way. Chile hated Goku mm. and Broly immediately liked him and now they're all besties. Yeah, exactly. Same thing's going to happen. I can see it happening. Especially when uh, Khalifa starts like mildly flirting slash training with him and yeah. she'll be like, you know what? Yeah, all right, I trust you. <laughs> but um, there's, only, there's only two other people who I could see getting a new form because I, I don't see Hit getting a new form. I feel like he's a one and done type guy. Well, he he said that he doesn't power up. He because yeah. he he intentionally pretended to power up mm. to develop his abilities. So all he does is just flexes. He literally says he just flexes his pocket, which is yeah. a good statement. But yeah, <laughs> I think there's potential we might see him without a coat on. <laughs> but apart from that, I don't think we'll see anything else uh, from Hits. But there is two more characters I can see with new forms. One of them, Pan. I can see her becoming Super Saiyan, even if it's just a off the cuff scene. Yeah. Just at fine. some point. And the other character, Jiren. I can see Jiren coming back. Again, he's too big of a character at this point, even though I don't personally like him and I think he's pretty boring. He's too big of a character, and at the minute, the ultimate rival currently, you know, he is the strongest person who they've come up against who isn't Beerus mm-hmm. or a god. Yep. So he is the ultimate person for them to challenge again in a fight. And with Goku getting better and better at Ultra Instinct, I feel like Jiren needs something to match. So he'll go one step beyond his whole big Hulk and phase as well and learn some new form. I can see that happening. 
I'd be interested to see what he could actually look like because he's gone full power mode. Yeah. Which is just bulky. Mm. Like, I wonder what he could actually look like. I don't know, but I mean, we've seen Topo transform into a God of Destruction. So it's a, yeah, he we're, a bad guy. He should have been the ultimate, but whatever. But uh, yeah, Jiren, I can see him maybe getting another form. Why not? I don't know. Turn him in. Turn him. In, turn, uh, I can't even speak. Turn him into a full generic alien, and his next form be really skinny. <laughs> Same head, just skinny body and limbs, and that would be it. Yeah, why not? Maybe, maybe Jiren grows hair. Whoa! Oh. Imagine. How would that even look? I couldn't even picture it. <laughs> Weird. For like Hulk Hogan hair, like <laughs> just around the side. <laughs> just the side. <laughs> yeah, and long down. Yeah, oh, no, he could like get horns or something like that. So yeah, maybe. Weird. Why not? I mean, when people transform, when well, when bad guys transform, they usually grow noses and ears. So why not? I mean, I think June has a nose and ears already, but horns, yeah, go for it. <laughs> I think out out of the good guys, I think there's. I don't think our main ones, Goku and Vegeta. I don't think there's anything they need just uh, yet. I don't think they. Need, well, I mean, apart from the Ultra Ego, which we've already said will come at some point. I can't see Goku getting anything else. Is it's really not needed at this point? How can he get better than Ultra Instinct? Let's face it. What are you supposed to do after that? <laughs> there's nothing. Yeah. Like he would have to have developed past Whis, mm. who has perfect Ultra Instinct. Yeah, like unless... the angels has the angels have perfect Ultra Instinct, don't they? Like... Yeah, unless he also gets that and his skin turns blue as well. But <laughs> I don't see that happening. Like, because there's levels of Ultra Instinct, isn't there? Mm. Like, like he's just got like the the baby form. Mm. Like, there's there's levels of mastered Ultra Instinct. And yeah. he's still got the baby form, so he still needs to do better with it. Mm. So that'll be his development arc with it. Yeah. You don't just get it and then you're good with it. You still have to be better with it. Yeah. And um and yeah, Vegeta, like I don't think he'll get Ultrigo and then just toss it aside. I think yeah. he'll be like I think he'll have that for the pretty much the entire thing. Exactly. I think it would be too good a form for him to have just tossed aside, even across the many episodes. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you have any other characters in mind that you think might get a new form? No. I think the rest of the Z Warriors are pretty much either given up on or. Unfortunately. We've got, we've got our other boys. We've got Piccolo. We've got uh, Gohan. Yeah. Too many new characters introduced now that I've taken focus, like Broly as well. So, yeah. But. Yeah. And they've they've tossed aside Beerus. He doesn't need it. He's, uh, he's yeah, he doesn't need new form. Yeah, he's he's he he would just develop Ultra Instinct. He's yeah, probably exactly. never going to fight again anyway. Mm, exactly. So, no. Yeah. So I think that's it for the characters. Um, I think we can wrap up this segment there. Um, yep. But yeah, please leave some comments. Who do you think will get new forms in the Return of Super? Is there anyone you agree or disagree with? Uh, we would love to know. Leave some comments. And yeah, we'll move on now to our new segment. Oh, getting in the way with something new, mm. which is oh, everything wrong with. So <laughs> <laughs> let's jump in, into it. <laughs> everything wrong with. So this is everything wrong with the new segment of the podcast where we make some controversial decisions. Yeah, well, opinions, I guess. Um, because we're going to talk about people's favorite characters and tell you everything that's wrong with them. Uh, so I'm ready for the hit. It's going to go down well. <laughs> yeah, like usually we're the ones, you know, talking about other people's controversial opinions, but people don't even listen to that anyway. And they're just like, but you're wrong, even though it's not our opinion. But now this segment is all about our opinions <laughs> and everything. Let's be wrong. <laughs> yeah, everything we don't like about particular characters. And since this is episode one, we wanted to start off with the biggest character. So we're talking about Goku today. So this is going to be interesting. Everything wrong with Goku. He's terrible. I hate him. Yeah, He's I'm terrible. picturing the likes <laughs> to dislike ratio already. But, uh, you know, every character in the show, there's always some little things here and there that people just disagree with. Or, just, you know, don't really like about a character. It doesn't mean you dislike the character as a whole. 
You know, like there's there's certain things I dislike about pretty much every character, I think, but it still doesn't mean I completely hate them. It's just there's little things here and there that are like, ah, eh, not so great. So that's kind of where we're going for. You know, we're going to talk about some things that, well, I guess since first episode is Goku, we're going to talk about things like Goku did in the show that we maybe disagree with and certain characteristics and other things that we don't like about him as well. So let's get started. <laughs> indeed. Yeah, so I thought, you know, his, his personality as a whole, you know, he's very childlike and innocent. And sometimes that can come back to bite him or cost people. And it's easy to say, let's just push all that blame on the fact he bumped his head as a kid, <laughs> you know, because his main task, his main task is to get sent to Earth and, you know, destroy a planet, take over. And he couldn't even do that. That's something wrong that Goku did already. He couldn't take over Earth because he bumped his head. <laughs> But no, that doesn't count. I don't care about that. That's not something that's wrong with him. Um, but there is definitely some things. So I didn't know how best to structure this. So I thought, do we go through the story or do we just pick particular points? So I've just got particular points I don't like about him. So I'm going to start with one of the biggest things that people don't like that Goku did the most, which was during the Cell arc. He gave Cell a Sensu Bean just so that it was a fair fight. What a stupid thing to do. It was idiotic. The world is in danger of this massive villain who's, you know, trying to overthrow and destroy the planet and kill everyone. And he thinks, you know what, Cell? I know you're the bad guy here, but, you know, Gohan's pretty strong. You should have this and get up to full power just so it's a bit of a fair fight. Don't worry about all these people on the world, these million, billions of people who, you know, could suffer because I'm going to give you this. But, uh, you know, Gohan's pretty strong. You need this. Terrible. Bad decision. Shouldn't have done it. Bad move. There is literally no justification for that. Yeah. It is by far... I, I know we've done previously in a Hall of Fame biggest mistakes. Mm. I don't know why that we didn't pick that and why that didn't win. I think it was a backup option that I had. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you know it was, it was just it was probably just the dumbest thing more than anything else because mm. it because it didn't actually end up costing anything in the end. But it, it was didn't. just dumbest well, thing. I mean, it kind of did. It cost the fact that uh, King Kai died because of it. Goku died because of it. Mm. <laughs> you know. <laughs> if he yeah. just kept cell not in fighting shape and gohan just killed him then uh you know well, other people wouldn't have died <laughs> yeah i suppose um but yes there is literally no excuse for that i mean mm. he's i think he's just his naivete is painful sometimes yeah, yeah. i mean this is something that he comes back to haunt him multiple times. He does it with Raditz as well by trusting him when Raditz asks him to let go of his tail, which was stupid. Twice? Twice? Uh, no, just once, I think. I think in Team oh, Four Star he does it twice because they do the joke like he lets go oh, a second yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, in, <laughs> in the actual show, he lets go once and then it's like, no, yeah. I'm holding on. But uh, yeah, he does it with Raditz. He does it with Frieza by, you know not killing him on Namek. He gives him a bit of his energy, which, why does he do that? There's constant times where he just gives the bad guy energy or lets them go. Again, with Vegeta as well, which I guess ended up being a good thing because Vegeta became an so, ally. So he can so he can fight him again. Yeah, but that's stupid though, especially when they're threatening the planet. Literally purely so he can fight him again. Hmm. Which is, is selfish. Yeah, he <laughs> he is... A very selfish person. Yeah. A lot of people say he's not selfish because he, he feeds his family and and stuff like that. That is a very basic thing to do. Yeah. Like that is a very basic request to to, to... Chi Chi has to make him do the farming and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. it, it's it's like it's not like he's like, Yeah, sure, I'll do that. I'm happy to go do that. It's like when he goes and gets to the shop and he's told to go do that stuff. Mm. When he when he plows the field and stuff like that, he's told to go do those things. When he when he goes to the school, like 
for the interview for Gohan and everything like that. He's made to wear the suit. He yeah. has to. He's constantly pulling that. He doesn't want to be there. Mm. Like he's made to do these things. He like he's a very selfish person. And any time he gets a chance to, he's off. Yeah. He's a very selfish person. Even mid interview <laughs> at the school, yeah. he instant transmissions away. <laughs> he just has enough and leaves. Uh, but yeah, you know, like getting back to the cell point, it's just he's done it a lot where he's gave people his energy and it's oh, something to help them and it's so naive and it rarely helps it rarely comes out good it did with vegeta which fair enough but even then in that moment i still think the smart decision would have been to let krillin just do the final blow with the sword and kill vegeta because the threat of vegeta returning and blowing up the planet was there and he just thought you know what I'm going to let you off. And it did work out, but that's the only time, I think, where it has worked that, out. That just happens to be a fortunate happenstance. Yeah. Like, he had no idea that Vegeta would come back. Mm. Like, Vegeta had malicious intent going to Namek. Mm. He would have very happily killed Krillin and Gohan and everybody like that had the Ginyus and that not turned up. Yeah. Like, he would have very happily killed them. He was going to get the Dragon Balls for himself. Yeah. 100%. Like, yeah. He had the only reason he teamed up and ended up being with them is because basically he didn't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> so they team like, up or die. <laughs> yeah. The only reason he let them live, he let Vegeta live, is because he wanted to let him go so he could fight them, get stronger, and fight them. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it was selfish. Yeah. That's simple as that. He didn't do it. He, he didn't do it with the thought of, oh, you'll be our friend later. Mm. No, that's not why he did it. And to pretend otherwise is silly. Yeah, but that, that's, that's for the Vegeta episode. When we get around to him, we can talk about that more. No, no, for Goku. Goku. Oh, for, for Goku, yeah, let him go. Goku okay, let yeah, him yeah, fair enough. Fair Goku let him live. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's not why Goku let him live so yeah. that he would be our friend later. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not why Goku did it. And to pretend otherwise is silly. Yeah. Um, so no, again, he purely does these things because he wants to fight, mm. and it's the same. So it's the same with Freezer. He let Freezer live. He's he helped. With, um, literally, I think the only time he took it seriously is he didn't encourage Boo. Mm. Yeah, like, you learn from his mistakes. <laughs> I think literally with Boo is fine, but then the tournament of power, he goaded things on. He did. Like yes, yeah. you can't you can't help but admit it. He did go he did go down the fight. Like yes, well the whole tournament was because of him. Which I know I've seen a lot of people online saying as well. But ah, uh, but yeah, but if Goku didn't do that, then all the universes would have just ex well got rid of anyway or whatever. It's like yes, but Zeno wasn't planned on doing that then they well both of them i guess well yeah both of them kind of forgot about it they wanted to do it but kind of just didn't think about it and then goku was like oh i want to fight people and they're like oh actually that reminds me oh yeah i wanted to destroy plenty of universes so yeah let's get them all together for a tournament i mean it literally has the attention span of a three-year-old or something like that yeah like, would you have ever remembered Potentially not, and I think there's honestly a strong chance that if Goku just said he he wanted to meet them, or if Zeno said, "Oh, I'm gonna destroy them," Goku could have probably convinced Zeno to just be like, "Well, no, no, let's let's not do that." And I th honestly think Zeno might have listened because Goku's the only one who actually treats him like a person and not and doesn't quiver in fear. So, yeah, <laughs> I think they would have listened. Potentially. And the thing is, Goku does not listen ever. Hmm. Like, in the terms, in the, like, when it comes to Zeno, for instance, like, he doesn't listen to Beerus at all. Yeah. Like, Beerus tries to warn him about engaging with Zeno and, and how dangerous it can be to hurt him or anything like that hmm. and how careful you have to be. And he gets lucky with how Zeno actually responds to him, but if he was any other being who takes negativity to him, he could have got their entire universe wiped out. Yeah. 
I mean, again, going even further back, this is the same thing that, that Vegeta was saying to him about Beerus. Be respectful. Don't do all this. And Goku's like, oh, hey, let's fight. <laughs> yeah. Again, King Kai, same again. Like, King Kai yeah. tells him not to fight, and he just does it anyway. He just jumps out. He just does not listen, ever. Even slightly before getting to King Kai on Snake Way, it was like, pay attention on Snake Way. Don't fall off, otherwise you'll be stuck in hell. What does he do? He falls asleep, falls off, and gets stuck in hell, and then escapes because he doesn't listen and he's not supposed to leave, but he does anyway. <laughs> like, come on. Uh, but uh, going back to the to the freezer points, there's something else as well that he does with freezer, which is annoying, which is he toys with him on Namek. You know, King Kai is in his ear uh, through the some form of wave wavelengths to communicate with him. And he's like, Hello, yeah. yeah, he's like, kill him now. And Goku's like, no, not yet. <laughs> and because of that, Freezer, he puts his hand on the earth and goes, whoop, and then, you know, the planet starts exploding. That's because Goku decides he doesn't want to kill him yet and lets him talk when King Kai is shouting at him, like, kill him now. And he's like, nah. So, you know, the Namekians, poor guys, they lost their planet because Goku decided not to just finish off Frieza when he had the chance. And that's not the only time he lets that happen because in the Resurrection F film as well, Vegeta fighting uh, Frieza as he does and Whis and Beerus are like, shouldn't you help out? And Goku's like, no, it's Vegeta's turn. <laughs> so he just stands and watches as Frieza decides to blow up Earth. And if no, we if we wasn't that literally he's done it in the past. Yeah, well, he's done the exact same thing in the past. <laughs> if Weiss wasn't there to turn back time, which again he could have honestly just said, "No, I'm not going to turn back time." He didn't need to, but he did as a favor. But then Goku jumps in and just ends the job, just because he knows what's going to happen. But because he doesn't know what's going to happen, or he just wants to see everything play out, he doesn't finish Freeze off. He lets Vegeta just have his turn, and he gets cocky, and Freeze blows up the Earth. Two planets that are destroyed because Goku doesn't just finish the job. <sighs> I, think, I mean, he got shot because he was playing about as well. Yeah. He got shot by Freezer Sorbet or whatever, his, his minion, Freezer's mm. minion. How fast could he have killed Freezer if he wanted to? Very. <laughs> yeah, he could have annihilated Freezer in the Resurrection of Sorbet, and he just didn't. Yeah. And it's the most ridiculous thing ever. It's like, he toys with his food so much. He's as bad as the bad guys with it. <laughs> Basically. Sadly true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Goku is very irresponsible mm. when it comes to fights because he enjoys the fight too much. Mm. His love for the fight costs people lives. Yeah. Too much. Plenty of lives. <laughs> yeah. The whole earth at one point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like our boy, our boy Goku is a dangerous to, danger to everybody. Yeah, which is a shame. But uh, there's other things that, you know, aren't dangerous characteristics that he has, but are just things that he said which are questionable at best. Like um, <clears throat> when he meets the, what's his name, Grand Kai, Old Kai, you know the Old Kai, what's his name, Elder Kai? Yes. Yeah, when he pervy. meets, yeah, pervy old Elder Kai. Yeah, <laughs> when he meets him and, you know, he's trying to get him to help out during the Boo arc, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, he, he offers a kiss from Bulma. And, you know, it's like, what are you trying to do here, Goku? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to prostitute out your friends here? Like, why Bulma? Doesn't, and, he, doesn't he offer uh, Videl as well? Um, Videl might have been uh, offered, I think, and then Gohan, because Gohan's also, yeah, and he's like, whoa, sure, no. I'm pretty sure Gohan gets angry. Yeah, he's because... He's just literally just thrown out women yeah like, and then <laughs> vegeta another thing which is on the same lines is that vegeta confronts him about it and say what the hell are you doing pretty much <laughs> and goku said well i would have offered chi chi but she isn't attractive enough and it's like come on goku she's wow. your whole wife what are you doing here you're just insulting everyone here prostituting out your friends saying that your wife's basically ugly or not attractive enough for an elder kai like what i mean to come be on. fair apparent, apparently in super he's never kissed her like I caught the super in the Goku Black Arc. We, we learned apparently he's never kissed her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just come on, Goku. 
<laughs> you can't do that. You should know this. Even if you have bumped your head, someone must have clued you in that, you know, women aren't just objects that you can give to people. Like, come on. <laughs> Ridiculous. Something he should know as an, a, a grown man, even if he is spending all his time training, he should know this by now. He grew up around Bulma. She slapped some sense into him plenty of times. Like, you know. Plenty of times, yes. Yeah. You should know this by now. Don't mess around. You spent too much time with Master Roshi, that's the thing. <laughs> how, uh, yeah. how can you spend that much time around Master Roshi and not know these things? Yeah. He spends way too much time around Master Roshi to not know these things. It's the bad habits he's picked up from him, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Which is strange, because actually, thinking back now, he says that Chi-Chi's not attractive enough, so he has learned some measure of attractiveness because remember we actually did a react vi video on this back on og dragon ball uh master roshi says to go get him a girl so goku comes back with like three different girls and Ma they're all like <sighs> ugly i guess one of them's a mermaid one of them's like some massive hulkan woman and then master roshi holds up two images one of a conventionally attractive girl and one of a conventionally ugly girl and he's like, which one's more attractive? And Goku's like, how am I supposed to know? I don't know them. And, he's like, <laughs> and Master Roshi's just like, are you blind? Like, what? So he has learned some measure of attractiveness to be able to even say that Chi Chi's not as attractive or not attractive enough. So it just doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. God damn it. <laughs> Goku, you're no simple creature. Yeah, he he's he, just infuriating. In general. He, yeah, he needs to learn equal rights. That's the thing. <laughs> Bad Goku. Bad Goku. Yeah. That's another thing wrong with Goku. There yeah. you go. Just like in uh, everyone's favorite song, Hulk Hogan's theme music, he fights for the right of every man, and only men, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, that's, that's only one part of his personality that is questionable at best, because there was also the time during was it after the boo fight i think it was after the boo fight where you know everyone thinks he's dead and you know people are gathering up the dragon balls to bring him back to life and then shenron's like you do realize he's actually alive and he has been the whole time and everyone's like what we've been gathering these dragon balls waiting for months and he's alive already and he hasn't told anyone and I was like, oh, yeah, okay, bring him back here then. And he's like, uh, Goku doesn't want to come back yet, actually. He's uh, he's off finding out the secrets of the universe and everything. So, yeah, he just he just wants to be left alone for now. It's like he couldn't tell his family or friends for months that he's actually alive. Like, come on, Goku. <laughs> Ridiculous. He leaves everyone multiple times just to train. This is this is a thing. He abandons friends and mm. family for incredibly long periods of time. Yeah, and a lot of the time he won't tell them where he where he went. Yeah, I even so, tell them that he's leaving. <laughs> he just yeah. goes. <laughs> like, I mean, it was like he will literally just disappear, and yeah, that's it. Like, end of Z as well with Oob. He just flies off into the distance and says, yeah, I'm going to train Oob now. Bye, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Like, are, are you coming back? Uh, maybe. <laughs> like, like, literally abandoned his family to go do that. Yeah. Like, just peace out. See ya. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like he's, got, he's got this super protege kid at the end of Z who's supposed to be the world's Strongest. protector. Yeah. In Gohan, nah, I'll I'll have this small child who used to be a reincarnation of a pink, scary demon. Yeah. I'll have this instead. So you've literally got the world's protector instead, who's now got unlocked <laughs> potential. Use yeah. that. Like <laughs> Yeah. Now I'll I'll have the, the demon reincarnation instead. Mm. <laughs> It's true. I just say, like, yeah, there's so many times where he abandons people or just leaves them or just goes off. I say, again, after Frieza as well, you know, he isn't dead after Namek explodes. He ends up on Yardrat and learns instant transmission and everyone doesn't know where he is. And then he just reappears back on Earth after Trunks kills Frieza and say, oh, here's Goku, where have you been? Oh, I've just been off training, learned how to do this, pop, and transforms over there, or moves over there. 
So yeah, I can do this now. <laughs> and then that's it. It's like, oh, so, you know, we waited for you to come back. We didn't know you were even alive. And yeah, that's at least two times where he has been alive when everyone thought he's dead. Yeah. And a lot of people say like, oh, well, he, he was away in space. He, he couldn't get back. But he decided to train first before <laughs> coming back. Yeah. Like he could have, you could easily argue that he could have came back then trained hmm. like instant oh. transmission is very useful useful but yeah. <laughs> yeah but like eating aliens or whatever is is a bit creepy like <laughs> what didn't he, yeah didn't he have to eat aliens or whatever I, he, he would have if he was on this alien planet he would have been yeah. in their no, delicacies isn't that how he learned instant transmission i've, I've heard like yeah and by eating them, them. Yeah, it was like uh, something I weird. I can't. I've, I've heard something like that. It's it not anime cool. canon. It might be manga canon. <laughs> yeah, it's like some weird thing where you have to like keep aliens. I don't know. It's odd. No idea. But anyway, the thing is, he basically decided I can either return home to my family as quick as I can because they're worried I'm dead, yeah. and then I'll worry about training and things like that and getting stronger. Oh no, I can train. And I'll, they'll, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Yeah. yeah I'll train. I'll train and be fine. Like, literally, that's what he did. He'd be like, they'll, they'll, they'll be fine. They've sure. all been mourning because they think he's dead. And then actually he's alive and actually he just doesn't want to come back. And it's like, what? Why? Like, We've all mourned for you. We thought you were dead. And then he does it a second time because he didn't learn his lesson that first time. Like, come on, like, Goku. He- like he didn't know some magical future boy was going to turn up and kill. Yeah, like Freezer. What if what if Trunks just didn't appear? Freezer maybe probably to be honest could have just wiped out everyone on Earth, and then yeah. Goku just pops in and is like, "Oh, what happened here? I guess I was late for something." <laughs> like literally, he would have just turned up a cart to Carnage. Like he would have killed. Like he would have killed um, Freezer. Yeah, like, yeah, he would have killed yeah. Freezer, but he Freezer he could have, have killed everyone else well, before that. Them, yeah, but because he was stronger than Trunks, yeah, but would have been a bit late. <laughs> yeah, like Freezer and King Cold, if they worked together, which they would have, would have killed everyone. They just would have, they would have wiped them out. Yeah, <laughs> even Vegeta, like he wasn't on that level yet. He still didn't know Super Saiyan at this point, so yeah, no. they would have all died. We would have tore them apart, but. Yeah, he he would have been defending a, a broken world. Yeah, and Quite since Piccolo is gone and Namek is destroyed at this point, no more Dragon Balls to wish everyone back. <laughs> it's like hopefully mean, training was worth it. Yeah, at least let someone know how to get in contact with you in case this type of thing happens. <sighs> he got supremely lucky, basically. Yeah. That Trunks came back from the future. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he got lucky. It's just, lightly. just so it, just so he could train, basically. Mm. Yeah. Um. So again, selfish. Yeah. Do you have any other points? I've kind of exhausted my list now that I had. I think that, I think you've pretty much covered the ones out, the main ones I was thinking of. To be honest, yeah. Yeah. I think the main ones. Um, he did get better in Super a little. He did. Yeah, he did. I mean, we mentioned that he put the universes at risk, I guess, which is a big yeah. one. <laughs> but... I, think, I think, yeah, I think, I think that's the big one, really, yeah. is that he's just, he's too, he focuses too much on the fight. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, you say, say he gets better, but a lot of super focused around that. Yeah. So, like in Black, in the Goku Black arc, there wasn't really any opportunities for that to happen because mm. it, was, it wasn't his arc. Yeah. Um, it was Trunks' arc, wasn't it? Mm. Um, and they actually let him have an arc. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of the other arcs, he didn't really have an opportunity to screw it. But in Atomic Power, yeah, it did focus around him just being way too obsessed with the fight. Mm. Um, yeah. So no, like you've, you've pretty much covered all the main points that I was thinking of. Yeah, and I do want to reiterate again, like even though we've went through all this stuff and spent this whole segment talking about how much. Like, how many things that Goku's done wrong. It doesn't mean we dislike him as a character. I actually like Goku. We love Goku. Yeah, of course yeah. I do. Of course I do. He's the main character. He's a likable guy. And I wish he was my friend as well. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, I like Goku as a character. Yes, he can be naive. And yes, he can be selfish. And yes, he can put the world at risk. 
multiple times. But you know, it's part he's of his charm. The one that saves it, yeah, he's, he? he's part of the charm. You know, it's his charm. You know, it's that cheeky little thing that he does. Like, oh, let's just put the planet at risk again. But you know, you've got to still love him. Oh, <laughs> there is there is one thing, oh. and it is that Bulma states he is always the one that draws the evil to the world. Mm. Bulma directly states it. Yeah, yeah I guess. And yeah, that's why in Z he says he doesn't want to return. Yeah. Which could be seen as a good thing, I guess. He doesn't want to put well, everyone he knows at well, risk, so he stays away. Well, the fact that he's the one that draws the evil is uh, a bad thing. Yeah, but, uh, that's, <laughs> that's kind of not his fault, though, in a way. Raditz came because they're related. Vegeta came because of Raditz. And then Frieza came because of Namek. <laughs> that wasn't technically Goku's fault, I guess. But, yeah, suppose. yeah that was mainly... And well, I guess Vegeta's fault. If Vegeta didn't kill Piccolo, then they wouldn't have had to go to Namek, and then Frieza would never have found out about them. So, yeah. Juro and the entire Android saga is Goku's fault. Yeah. Red Ribbon is entirely Goku related. No, Red Ribbon no, was no, around no, before that's Goku. Not that's not true. Everything. No. Original um, Red Ribbon isn't Goku's red, fault. Red Juro red is. Yeah. Everything to do with Juro and afterwards. Is yeah, boo. No, 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 that's not fair. Yeah, that's not a fair assessment when you think about it. That is not a fair assessment from Bulma. No, it's just Jero. That's it. One yeah. person, <laughs> when you wait, yeah, when you think about it, it's not actually a fair assessment from Bulma. Yeah, he is, he is the one that deals with it, mm. but boo would be released anyway. Freezer. Technically, wouldn't have cared. Wouldn't have cared about Earth in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Unless they hadn't met on Namek. Mm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a lot. Of, a lot of it's coincidences. Yeah, bad statement from Bulma there. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's a good place to wrap up this this yeah. little segment. So I'm really curious to know. What you guys think you know this is a new segment that we're trialing out you know we're gonna go f- forward with it anyway going into the future and stuff but uh this was the first one with goku the big dog himself so you know i'd love to know what you guys think about this and do you agree with our points do you disagree is there anything we missed that goku did that was just so stupid or so character ruining that type of thing please let us know in the comments but uh yeah we're gonna move on now to the hot take let's go Hot take. And now it's time for the hot take, which I have stolen this week. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going forward. Week. Yeah. It's yours yeah. now. Take it. <laughs> Responsibility is gone. <laughs> yeah, we mixed like we said, we've been mixing it up. Um because I've I think I found a good couple of ones recently, so I'm yeah. gonna see if I can keep going. Mm. Um and I found, I think I found a good one this week. Um, someone who's feeling a bit passionate about mm. our boy Gohan. They've even got some words in capitals. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, so we should state these aren't our opinions. These are just yes. opinions we found online that we discuss. <laughs> but that won't matter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it's, a slightly, it's a slightly older take. So it's before, it's during Super. Um, but it's so, but it's before Broly and things like that. Okay. But I thought it was interesting, so I want to discuss it anyway. Hmm. It's a little longer, so here we go. It's Reddit, of course. Of course. <laughs> so, these so-called true Gohan fanboys keep spreading the misinformation that he hates fighting. Yes, Gohan loves his family and takes care of them, but he still fights, just not main villains. Or the likes. The guy literally has a second persona dedicated to fighting. Say a man. Gohan fights crime and thugs daily. People need to stop with this rumor that Gohan dislikes fighting. He is not Gohan. Uh, he is not Goku who has an obsession with fighting. Gohan fights for a cause, and that is justice. He has showed showed this every time and it's a disservice to Gohan's character to spread this BS. (laughs) 
For God's sake, Gohan was supposed to become the main character after the Cell Saga. So yes, people have a legit reason for being upset with his current status. Gohan not only left, is not the only one who has gotten the no fighting treatment either. Videl and the other Z Warriors have all gotten that. Please understand, Gohan won't have a family if the world ends. Gohan knows that. He would fight, and you all know that too. You all know that, <laughs> yeah. So, quickly uh... sum it up, Gohan does not hate fighting. You all know it. Uh, you're just a bunch of fanboys. You don't know otherwise. <laughs> well, uh, you know what? I would be inclined to agree. You say this is before the, the Broly arc, well, the, the films and stuff, but... You know, if this was done during Super, which you say it was, did, did he just not watch Super? Because, you know, he's kind of hung up the Saiyaman boots almost. You know, yeah, he does the film. But apart from that, he's not actively being Saiyaman anymore. He's not going around fighting crime. He's kind of left the costume in his closet. He's left it behind. You know, he's not doing that so it, anymore. It's mid-Super. Hmm. All it's... right. In the middle of the super. Well, yeah, um, either way, we've seen by this point that, you know, Gohan isn't being Saiyaman anymore. You know, he's just being a family man. He's just chilling at home, not really doing much. He's got a baby, just kind of chilling. So you agree that he doesn't hate fighting? No, I would have agreed if there was no super. If it ended at Z, then I could be like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, he's got this all like ego as Saiyaman where he goes around fighting crime on a daily. But because of super, I can't agree with it because no, he's stopped that now. He's got a family. You know, he doesn't really care about fighting still <laughs> as he did. But just because you hate Right, just because you fight crime, that doesn't mean he enjoys fighting. Well, no, it doesn't, but it means that he's actively going out his way to do it when he doesn't need to. He could just leave it for the police. He's only fighting petty robbers and stuff like that. As Saiyan Man. Yeah, because he has the ability to do so, I mean, he can he can save people, but like he is a pacifist. Yeah, let, know. let's face it though. The same I mean, he's not, he's not killing them, and he's no, not fight, he's not fighting them, is he? No, he's just arresting them, basically. Or passing yeah, he's them just over like, the oh, stop, please. Yeah, that's the thing. You can tell he enjoys it. Simon is a very eccentric character. He's doing all the poses. He's he's you know making all these like he's changing his voice. He's hiding himself in costume. He loved it when Bulma gave him the gift of uh, the like helmet thing instead of wearing the glasses because he thought it was so cool and stuff. He's enjoying being Saiyan Man. Like, no one can argue that. You know, he's not doing it because he feels a need. He's doing it because he's enjoying it. Is he not just enjoying the theatre of it? Because he thinks he's cool. Well, that's just a part of it, though, isn't it? That's a part of the full package of what he's doing, you know? That's something he's added into it. I mean, the amount of times he's... But he never trains, ever. No, but he doesn't need to because he's only fighting these robbers, which he knows he's stronger than. And what about all the times where he's he's actually fought and said he'll fight to protect people every time after a big bad came and he knows that a big bad could come back and he intentionally doesn't afterwards. Uh... And And literally the most recent film was focused entirely around that fact. Because I think... Mm. he enjoys saving people maybe the fighting bit's the bit that he you know he's against because you know a pacifist as he is but these random nobodies you know these robbers and all these other earthlings I guess that he's stopping as Saiyaman it's just like because they're no match for him at all he does enjoy it you know if he's he has bully. to well, kind of, but it's more like a superhero. <laughs> it's like, you know, a Superman. You know, a Superman is stronger than any Earth human, but yet he goes around, you know, still fighting people every now and again, saving people's lives and stuff. And it's like, does he enjoy it? Even though he's way stronger than everyone ever? Like, maybe he enjoys saving people. It doesn't mean he has to enjoy the fight, particularly. But if he needs to against a yeah. normal person, it's pretty easy going for him. <laughs> I mean, is that, is that not more accurate? 
is is that what the person was saying is is not just he enjoys justice he enjoys yeah i think that's that's not it. that's not fighting yeah so saying that gohan does not hate fighting he does hate fighting i think he just enjoys peace and justice yeah, and things yeah. like that like he's not going and fighting people ever no, he's he's happy. not going out of his way to purposely fight people. He's going he is going out of his way to save people though, which is a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. I just I don't think in any way, shape, or form he's a fighter. No. Unless he has to ever. Mm. Yeah. Like he's we don't see any evidence. I mean he just he does not like to fight. Like hmm. but when then... he, like everything we saw in Z, he was afraid to fight. But then, actually, I've just thought, we've mentioned it before, but every time he does get in the zone, he does enjoy it. Like in Cell, he got cocky and was enjoying it a lot. He enjoyed he being down Cell. When he loses control. Yeah. But that's, also, why he, that's, why he's, that's why he doesn't want to. Yeah. That's why he doesn't want to embrace that because he's scared of it. Well, maybe that's why though, because he does secretly enjoy it when he gets in that zone. Like same with Cell Max as well. He he starts to enjoy it a bit that bit too much. You know? He does enjoy the fight when he gets fully engrossed in it. But until he gets engrossed, then yeah, I don't think he does. He enjoys the the you know, saving people. But the fight itself, it's not until he's fully engrossed and obsessed in it. I think I think that's the thing when the power takes over to him. Mm. I think the power trip mm. is what gets yeah. into him, and it it gets to his head. And I think when that takes over, that's a different side of him. Mm. And I would agree with that. But that's when the power is coursing through him and everything like that. Mm. Um, and that would agree with because that's almost a different person. Mm. Because that happened with Cell, and that happened with, um, um, yeah, and that happened in the superhero movie and everything like that. But I don't think that's a natural Gohan. I don't think that's Gohan in his natural state. No, no, I don't think because, so. Because that's when he's lost control almost. Mm. Like he has to be reeled in when that's happening. Like we've seen that in the most the most recent iteration of what we've seen of Gohan was superhero. Yeah. And he nearly got the world destroyed because he lost control when mm. he recent, most recently transformed. Pickle had to scream at him when he transformed because he was literally just like, This is cool. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you're you're trying to punch me and nothing's really happening. And look at you. <laughs> you're trying with your big scream with your screaming, and it's just like you're not doing anything to me. And like Piccolo, Piccolo, who who he basically he changed because Piccolo was getting killed. Mm. That was the reason he changed. And Piccolo's still like massively struggling and everything like that. And Piccolo has to scream at him to get his attention again. So he's totally ignoring Piccolo now. And he's just having he's smiling and loving it. Like he has to scream to get his attention again. And then he's like, Oh yeah, I have to kill you, don't I? And then he beam cannons it's like that's not gohan in a proper place mm. that's that's not gohan in a coherent mind i don't really think you can can say can say that's him thinking clearly no i agree with that whereas you've got him in the fighting in the tournament of power where he's fighting uh obni mm. Um, and he, um, um, I don't, if people can't remember his name, he's the guy who, um, who, uh, can turn into multiple forms. And when Gohan defeats him, it means that his universe gets deleted. And literally you see the Gohan that we know is someone who basically, because he delete, defeated Obni, entire universe gets deleted and you see a gohan who is devastated and who sees the repercussions of his actions of fighting 
Which is the annoying thing because like he must realize at this moment like oh this can happen in my universe let's bust out beast mode why not my wife my kids they could all die if I don't fight no nah, I'll, I'll I'll keep that one for later <laughs> it's it's like that's the, that's the thing it's like you see him fighting and it's like you see two different he's clearly uh, thinking a lot more. Mm. Over a lot, much more prolonged period of time during the tournament of power, yeah. Rather than that one moment in when he's lost his head, he, clearly during the tournament of power is the time when shown who he is mm. in my eyes, and that just shows that he doesn't want to be during the tournament of power. Yeah. He doesn't want to be doing it, but he has to do it because he has to defend his his universe from being deleted. Mm. But he's responsible, so he's he's just deleted another universe, and he's one step closer to helping his universe win. But he's devastated. Yeah. So, uh, to me, it's pretty obvious that he doesn't want to be there. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So yeah. I just think it's someone who really likes Gohan, but is not happy with the. Um, <laughs> direction they've took his character and i think there's a lot of people like that and that's fair enough but gotta accept it yeah Toys. just accept it. what they've just done come on now everyone yeah i agree with that like he doesn't enjoy fighting but he does enjoy saving people i think that's the the overarching main point we're trying to make here <laughs> yeah because the thing is, they've done this several times. They did it in the Resurrection F arc and everything like that, where he's like, he got massively defeated by Freezer, and he's like, I will, I will, um, I will train again to make sure I'm strong next time. Mm. And you didn't. And, didn't. and <laughs> basically, so and then repeat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he liked fighting, you would just or whatever. Go train or if you were even remotely interested in fighting. He would have actually done it one of the many times he said he was going to do it. Yeah. But guess what? He didn't. No, because he's Let so confident get... that Goku and Vegeta will be there to do the job, so he doesn't need to get involved. Yeah, he let himself get incredibly weak to the point they made a film about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's basically how bad it got. They yeah. made a film around it. Like, uh, poor Gohan. <laughs> or poor everyone else, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? He's a family man, so not poor Vidal, at least, I guess. He's at home all the time. Or, yep. or maybe sure. since he's still not picking up his kid from school. Who That's knows? True. Yeah. <laughs> but it's anyway. Okay. Pick and Janet. <laughs> yeah. Best new friends ship. Life. A new ship. But uh, yeah, I think that's a good place to wrap up this podcast. But please let us know do you agree with our opinions or do you agree with this guy whose opinion we're discussing? Let us know. But that's going to be it for this podcast. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like it up, subscribe down below if you haven't already. And other than that, we will see you all next time. See ya.